Welcome to the Gene Policini Center, home of the Tigers, where it's quiet now, but it won't be for long as the new season of RIT men's hockey is about to get underway. Good afternoon and welcome to RIT Hockey Media Day here on the RIT Sports Network. Well, last season was a season to remember for the RIT men's hockey team. The Tigers finished with 25 victories, the second most wins in a season during the Division I era. And for the first time since 2011, RIT was crowned the regular season champions of Atlantic Hockey. In the postseason, let's take a look back. The Tigers swept Mercyhurst in the Atlantic Hockey quarterfinals thanks to Game 2 overtime winner right here from Joe Joe Casero. Casero finished the season tied for the team lead with 14 goals and it was on to the semifinals for the Tigers. Tigers lost game one to Holy Cross and then won game two in dramatic fashion once again. The overtime winner from Elijah Gonzalez forced a third and final game but the Crusaders would prevail stunning the top seeded Tigers 5-1 to one to advance to the Atlantic Hockey Championship game where their run would end in a loss to league champion Canisius. Happy to be joined as always by the head coach of the RIT Tigers, Wayne Wilson, and coach looking back at last year with all the success, the dramatic playoff victories, and all that momentum to not get to the title game and to be able to host it here in this building. Did it take a while for everyone in the room to kind of get past that and stop wondering what might have been? Well, we were stunned, that's for sure, yeah. and um, and I thought Holy Cross played a uh, very well in, in all three games and uh, for us it's our kind of our driving force our motivation yeah. for this year as good as years we had and i'm very proud of the year that we had uh we felt we left something on the table and um you know so we're not coming in cocky or, yeah. <laughs> or anything like that we're confident but uh, we know we you know we want to be better than we were last year and we're gonna have to take that next step if, if to feel like we've uh, accomplished uh, what we want to yeah, the good news is your team is loaded heading into the season, and it starts with tremendous group of captains. Caleb Moretz returns for a fifth season and will wear the C. He's joined by Jojo Casero, Elijah Gonzalez, Aiden hansen Buketta, Cody Leskowski, and Carter Wilkie, who will all serve as alternates. And, Coach, you look at that, plus with what you have coming in, is this one of the better groups you have coming back in a long time? Well, I, I think the fact that uh, six of them are voted with a letter uh, yeah. led by Caleb. Yeah. Um, says a lot about our team and, and our leadership, and, and, and there's others I could add to that. So I think we're very fortunate that way that we've got a very determined uh, leadership group coming back, and uh, uh, as, as we can hopefully integrate our freshman class into that yeah. group as well, I, I think it bodes well for us. But uh, I'm excited about uh, the guys coming back and the direction they take our team in, and um, yeah, it should be another fun, exciting, and, and, and hard-fought year again. Yeah, it was great last year. As we mentioned, there is a wealth of talent and leaders, for that matter, in that locker room this season. And that includes the captain, Caleb Moritz, who joins us now on RIT Hockey Media Day. Caleb, thanks for joining us here today. What went into your decision to return, and, and did the way last season ended have any influence on that? Absolutely. It feels like a little bit was left on the table. Uh, a situation kind of presented itself where I could come back and, and it was a bit of a no brainer. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking forward to get back uh, into it. Uh, kind of like you said, ha have we got over it? I would say no. I think we're all still thinking about how we ended last season and, and we're trying to build on that and go from there. Yeah, you were chosen to wear the C this season. What does that mean to you? everything it's a it's a true honor especially thinking about the guys that that I played underneath for my four years here and and how they led the team and and just uh, the way they held themselves uh, it, it's a big honor and I'm looking forward to the challenge what are your initial thoughts on this team and its potential as we've ta already talked about with coach Wilson uh, you got a lot of guys coming back and, and some nice new additions yeah definitely have a really good group of guys coming back we got a good core we lost some leadership pieces from last year which which always hurts but with, with all the guys we have leading the team now and, and the freshmen coming in, I've, what I've seen so far from them in camp is I'm excited. I think they're going to step right in, and I think they're going to be big contributors. So I think uh, I think we had a really good team going forward. Well, we'll talk more about the schedule in just a bit with Coach Wilson, but Brick City Homecoming brings Notre Dame to town this season. You get a chance to play in South Bend a few years ago. What will it be like to be part of that game in downtown Rochester? Uh, it's one of the best games every year, yeah. uh, especially with uh, with a good opponent this year. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I haven't lost there yet, and we don't plan on doing that this year. All right, Caleb. Well, best of luck. It should be fun. Best of luck this season, and thanks so much for joining us on RIT Hockey Media Day.
Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, Carter Wilkie continuing his remarkable Tiger career this season as a junior. Wilkie, the reigning Atlantic Hockey Player of the Year after leading the AHA with 37 points last season. Wilkie's the only, uh, only the 11th player in RIT's Division I era to score 30 points in multiple seasons. Coach, he wins Rookie of the Year honors his first year, follows that up with Player of the Year honors. Is he just getting started? I mean, is he, could he go down as, as one of the best to, to put on the uh, sweater for you guys? Yeah, he certainly can. And, um, you know, I think Long is, and, and I'm sure he is uh, motivated to yeah. continue to get better. Uh, and, um, you know, he had some opportunities uh, uh, professionally that uh, he decided he wanted to come back as well and, and work on his game. So it's up to us to also push him uh, in that as well. But, uh, uh, yeah, he had uh, a great start to his career yeah. and then, last year's but uh he's a marked man you know it's not easy no. when uh, everyone's conscious of you and and game planning uh for that uh but that's where it's important that we have a good true good team yeah. around us that they can't just focus on one guy and think that that's gonna be the, the the solution to shutting us down we have a lot of players that are able to contribute and uh, that they have to be worried about and uh, Carter's just one of those guys as well and, and hope to, to see him continue his growth and um, it'll be important for us that he does uh, along with everyone else. You've had guys get invited to NHL development camps in the past. Carter, one of those guys this past summer, uh, how did that help him? What, did, what have you seen in his return after that? Well, uh, you know, I think when you get invited that, it's a, it's an honor, first of all. I think it uh, gives you some confidence. Yeah. Um, it also uh, gives you something to compare yourself to to see where you've got to improve in your game. Uh, uh, Caleb, uh, that was just Tom was invited uh, when he's an incoming freshman to Buffalo's camp, yep. and and JoJo uh, to Toronto's camp, and uh, to Tommy to Nashville. So we had a, you know we've had a number of guys invited to camp, so they've got to use that as uh, as motivation to uh, to better their game and uh, to see you know where they can take their game and uh, uh, just keep improving. Yeah, you talked about your goaltender. Tommy Scarfoni was one of the best goaltenders in the league last season, and he returns for his junior campaign this season. The Tigers' net will also be filled by a familiar face this year. Former Sacred Heart goaltender Luke Lush has joined the Tigers for his fifth year of eligibility. Lush had a 2.69 goals against average last season with the Pioneers, and there you see him in the orange and black. We had to ask him to change his pads. He didn't have <laughs> new pads yet. They're in now. The Sacred Heart pads are gone. What did you see from this guy over the years that said, hey, let's bring him in, how, how he can help us? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think uh, because of our team and uh, we've got a good team and, and Tommy had a great uh, start, but you, you want to be prepared in all areas yeah. to have some uh, depth in that. And uh, I thought he played very well against us in the two games that we played him here. I thought he had a good year whenever we watched him on video. Uh, Cody Laskowski knew him uh, from their younger days, and uh, so we want to know not only is he a good goalie, but yeah. uh, what is he like as a person, and, and he rubber-stamped him, and uh, he's fit in seamlessly, which isn't easy when you, uh, particularly when you're older, sometimes you think it would be easier, but, yeah. you know, he's coming into an established group, and uh, so he'll be competing along with Dan Chouinard uh, as well, so I, I think a lot of uh, Dan as well, and uh, as a group, they'll be fighting uh, to... Um, I don't want to say dethrone Tommy, but you want them all competing hard sure. to, for playing time. You you want them uh, going after that, and uh, it keeps everyone uh, motivated and, and, and continue to play hard so that no one gets the rest on their laurels. And uh, we didn't think that was going to happen here, but uh, I just think uh, it was hard to recruit the players uh, knowing yeah. that they're coming in and, and uh, going to be coming in uh, behind Tommy, that uh, the transfer we thought uh, was the best way to get someone that uh, – is a proven commodity in our league, and uh, and he he shows us a lot, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what he can do as well. I don't want to speak for the corner crew, but I would imagine they're going to be a little nicer to him now, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when yeah. he, especially yeah. when he takes his yeah, mask off. Yeah, 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 they yeah. do. I, I guess they gave it to him pretty good. I heard afterwards. So he, uh, he said, he "Hey, let's them. join him now, yeah, yeah, so I don't yeah. have to listen to that anymore." That's hey, great. hey, we talked a little bit about Notre Dame coming. Let's take a look at the schedule and what's coming up for the Tigers early on. It kicks off with a road contest at St. Lawrence on Saturday, October seventh. You'll have an exhibition with Guelph. Two days later, right here at the Policini before heading down. 
downtown for a date with the Fighting Irish at Blue Cross Arena. And then conference play kicks off with a home series against Sacred Heart, Lush, face, or Lush rather, facing his former team. And Holy Cross, the team that eliminated you from the postseason last March, you'll head out there to face them. The full schedule on RITathletics.com. You can get your tickets right now, season tickets as well, at RITtickets.com or at the box office here at the Gene Policini Center. You look at that schedule, Notre Dame obviously a highlight. We talked about it with Caleb. Getting them here in town after going out there a few years ago, we had to cancel because of COVID. They were supposed to be here in 2020. What's it going to mean to have the Irish here in town? Uh, in front of what I would expect would be a capacity crowd, maybe the hottest ticket we've seen in town uh, for a sporting event. Yeah, I, I think it will be a very hot ticket. Both them and St. Lawrence are makeup games yep. from COVID. So we're going to St. Lawrence, even though we're reestablishing a new series with them uh, later on uh, this year. Uh, we're going there, and then uh, Notre Dame. I mean, you can't get much bigger uh, name yeah. recognition than that. And um, yeah, we're we're excited. Jeff Jackson, uh, always a, a well-coached uh, team, uh, a, a national power, uh, someone that we get to see in uh, uh, for our homecoming, which yeah. is. Um, I'm still not learning about scheduling those fluff teams <laughs> and easy wins, but there's no easy wins. No, and, never. And uh, we're looking forward to that and in, uh, in the community scene, a, a real high level hockey uh, that particular weekend. Yeah, it should be fun. We're all looking forward to it. And, and of course, Robert Morris returning uh, to the men's and women's programs. And, uh, you know, Canisius winning last year. Robert Morris is back. You look at. This conference, always tough. You know it was hard to win the regular season championship. Where do you think the Tigers fare? How will they fare this year in the well, league? Well, we feel good about our yeah. team, uh, really. But, you know, uh, you, you should every year as a coach. I, I think uh, we have a lot of proven players coming back uh, to our yeah. team. So that obviously is a reason for optimism. Uh, but uh, there's injuries. There's uh, chemistry. There's just so much that goes into winning besides just having good players that – um, you know, we're going to have to be uh, sharper than we were last year if we want to go further. It yeah. doesn't mean you necessarily have to win a regular season, but, um, and in, in fact, if I had my choice, it, the p winning the playoffs is, is probably still more important to me than sure. uh, than the regular season. But uh, regular season in our league is, is quite an accomplishment just because of the parity in our league. We saw the seventh and eighth teams, um, I think, in our league uh, face off of the playoff championship last year so that gives you some indication of how much depth our league has and yeah. uh, so uh, we've got our hands full with our league play our non-conference will also help us a lot in preparing uh for non uh, for our conference games uh, uh unh coming at thanksgiving yeah. time uh, a hockey east opponent so there we've got a lot of uh, good opponents this year and uh our league is going to be as tough as ever. And you mentioned uh, St. Lawrence. Uh, you'll get them the first game of the year, and then they'll come back here uh, after the calendar flips to January. I believe January 5th they will be here in town. Clarkson the 6th. Yes. Did uh, I get that right? Yep. All right. <laughs> Hopefully the dates are right, but it's that first weekend after <laughs> that first weekend. January 1st, uh, St. Lawrence and Clarkson, which is uh, yeah, traditional rivals, yep. uh, Liberty League rivals. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So there's a lot of things like that. And uh, we've had some great battles with both those schools. And uh, so uh, us there and Niagara are both taking them on. So we do have a different opponent. We're not playing the same opponent yeah. twice, which is also a nice uh, change for us as well, I think, particularly in non-conference. And that's what ECAC does. They, they yeah. have a different one every night where we're doing two teams in one weekend, uh, usually in league play. So it should be fun. We're looking forward to it. Hey, if you want the latest news, schedule, scores, highlights, features, and, and more surrounding the RIT men's hockey program and Coach Wilson, all you need to do is download the RIT Athletics app for your Android or Apple device today. Wayne, your 25th season as head coach is upon us. Best of luck to you and the Tigers this year. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're making me feel old now. <laughs> oh, not at all. We're looking forward to it. It should be a fun year. That'll do it for us. Thanks so much for watching RIT Hockey Media Day here on the RIT Sports Network.